So we have our bird movement finished and we have our pipe movement mostly finished. I say mostly because there actually is still a bug with the pipes that I will fix right now. You will notice if I hit play that the pipe might move just a little fast. You can see it's kind of fast and it's very stuttery. You can see it kind of stuttering around and sometimes it like kind of pauses a little bit. This is not what we want. This is because of how fast the game is running. Right now the game is probably pushing hundreds of frames or probably something around there. Um, which is not good for our pipe movement because our pipe movement basically updates every single frame. Now I'm using a pretty high refresh rate monitor so I can't show you this but if you go to here which is your resolution and you click vsync basically what vsync does is it syncs the frame rate of the game up with your monitor so if you have a standard 60 hertz monitor it will lock the frame rate to around 60 fps and this will significantly slow the game down but that's actually what we want we want the pipe movement to act like vsync is enabled we can do this by going to our flow graph and instead of using this update block here, we can delete it and we can add in a fixed update. Basically what a fixed update does is instead of updating every single frame, it updates in a similar way as if your game was only running 60 frames. That way on every single computer, the pipes will move at the same speed. So let's say you're running on a very slow computer that's running less than 60, maybe you're running the game at 30, pipes will move at the exact same speed. If you're running a game, if you have a computer that's pushing a game out 200 frames at a time, it'll move the pipes at the exact same speed. So now if I were to run the game, you'll notice that the pipes run a lot slower. And this is a lot, is a lot more stable movement. So now you can correctly judge how fast you want the pipes to be, and you can go around and change your uh, speed variable over there. Now we need to work on collisions. The first thing we're going to need to do is go to our bird and add a box collider. So you go to add component, look up box collider, and use box collider 2D, so that's a little collider on the bird. I'm going to edit the bird's collider a little bit just so he has more room to move. By the way, build alt scales it on both sides equally just so you can have an equal collider so i'll scale it in just a little bit like that and you can adjust this however you feel is right so now we have the collider we are going to scroll down to our birds collider variable and i'm actually going to change it to a trigger if an object is changed to a trigger it does not collide with objects you would think that's counterintuitive because we need the bird to collide with the pipes but what i mean by that is if there's two objects in Unity that have a rigid body component, they'll land on top of each other and they'll push each other around. We don't want that because in Flappy Bird, the bird doesn't actually collide with the pipes. It just hits it and falls down. So that's what Trigger will do. It'll basically disable it actually getting pushed around by the pipes. So now we need to check if the bird has entered the pipes colliders. So we can go to our pipes and I'm going to hit open prefab. Here are our pipes and we have our colliders around them already. Now the problem here is that these pipes have different names. What we're going to do is we're going to check if the bird hits the pipes, then do something that results in a game over. You could do that by, let's say, checking if the pipe's name is pipe. That way we're checking specifically for the pipes collider and not the collider of any other game object that could possibly be in the scene. Problem is, these pipes are named differently, and you could rename them both to pipe, however that could get confusing. I'm going to instead use this tag up here. Basically what a tag is, is it's a larger category that you can put objects under. Let's say you have a skeleton monster and a zombie monster, you could put them all under the tag monster or enemy. That way your player is detecting for enemy objects, not detecting for zombies and skeletons individually because that's just a lot more work so i went ahead and created a tag called pipe which you can do by going to add tag and then clicking this plus here and then naming it whatever you want i've named mine pipe i went to my pipes here and i just enabled tag by clicking the drop down so now to actually detect this we can go to our bird go to the flow graph 
and we're gonna want to create a variable for a bird. So I'm gonna go to the variable and I'm gonna type in is dead. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check if the bird hits the pipe, it's gonna set this variable to true, saying that yes, this is a game over. So I'll hit the plus, go to type null, where it says null, I'm gonna change it to boolean, which is a true or false value. If the value box is empty, that means it's false. If it's true, that means it's true. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to set this to true by default, just to make it easier on the code. Just letting you know, if it's false, that means the bird is dead. I'll actually change this to is alive, just to make this a bit easier to read. So that'll be true by default. So to check for collisions, we're going to use a function called onTriggerEnter. However, I won't do this in the pipes code, I'm going to do it all within the bird. So essentially what we're checking, instead of if the bird hits the pipes, we're technically checking if the pipe hits the bird. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to look up on trigger enter 2D, because we're using a 2D project. So on trigger enter 2D, I'm going to drag this out, and we're going to go to control and get our branch block, which is our if block. Now there's two outputs here, one is our standard flow here. The other one is this collider variable. This collider reports back on what we've hit, which means it can read our collider's game object's name, or its tag, or its position. So, so I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to look up game object, and then tag. Then we can do get tag. So this is getting tag of the game object from the collider that we hit. So we can drag this boolean out, and we can do equals. Now equals can be used, it, it doesn't also, it doesn't always apply to math. We can use equals for pretty much anything to check if one equals another. So in this case, this is a string, which means it is a word. In this case, our pipes, their tag, their tag is pipe, just like this. So if we go to our bird, we can drag this out and grab a string literal. What a string literal is, is it's a, it's just a string. It's just a word. And we can type whatever we want in this text box right here. But in, in our case, we want to type in pipe as that is the name of our pipes tags. So I'll type in pipe. So this will return true. If our colliders game objects tag is equal to pipe. And if it is, just to check if our code is working, I can drag this out. We can look up debug log, and I'll drag this out, grab another string, then we can type in hit pipe. And this will basically send a message into our console saying, hey, we've hit a pipe, if this all returns true. So we can check this out by hitting play, and we click around, our bird's flying, and once we hit, we can see that our hit pipe has outputted into our console, which means our code is detecting that we are hitting pipes, which is exactly what we're looking for. So now we can delete these because we no longer need them, and instead we want to change this is alive to false, indicating that we've hit a game over. So we can drag out our true, go to variables, object, set is alive, and then down here, this is our input, this is whatever we're setting this variable to. Drag this out boolean literal which is just like our string except it is a boolean which means either true or false and we can leave this unchecked indicating that it is false so now if we go ahead and hit this pipe we should see that check mark over there get switched over to false and now we're going to want to incorporate this variable that we made over here into our input what we're going to want to check is if our mouse button is down and if is alive is true, then do whatever this is. So we can disconnect this. I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to grab an and. This and checks if both this, which is, which will plug into our A here, and whatever is in our B, they both equal true. Then I'll put this. So we can drag this out. Scroll down to variables, object, get is alive, and if they're both true then do whatever this is. This means if we hit a pipe and our is alive variable equals false now, 
or we should no longer be able to control our bird. He'll just fall to the ground, just like that. There we go. So we have our bird colliding with our pipes now. Now we need to indicate a game over. Now I've already dragged in this game over text from the Floppy Bird assets, which we will use for our game over. Just remember that the filter mode is set the point just because we're working with pixel art. Do the same with the pipes. I actually had forgotten to set it the point when I first dragged the pipes into the scene. So make sure that's at the point. So we don't, we're not gonna drag this into our scene because we don't want this to be a game object like the bird. We're gonna use this as a UI element. What UI stands for is user interface. It's basically the text at the top of the screen for your health bar or maybe your points or a pause menu. That all goes under UI. So we can right click, we're gonna go to UI now there's two things you can do. You can just straight up make a canvas, or in this case, I'll use image because we're going to want to drag in our game over. Now, if I, you can hit F to zoom out and it'll focus on our canvas. This canvas is our UI. You can see I can drag this square and these edges of, this, these edges of the canvas are the edges of our screen. One thing I'm gonna recommend that you should do is go to your canvas and down here under canvas scaler, change constant pixel size to scale with screen size just so everything stays the same size if you scale your screen. Because if it's set to constant pixel size, you can see the square stays the same size, but the bird does not, which is not what we want. We want them to scale at the same time. So now we want to replace this image with our game over text, which we can do by taking our text, taking our game over image and dragging it into this source image. Now you can see it's kind of squished. If you hit set native size in the image, it'll resize it to fit. I'm gonna go over here and rename our image to game over. Now our image is kind of small, so I'm going to scale it up a little bit by using the scale tool. And I'll also zero it out on the X and Y just so it fits. So now we have our game over text that scales correctly. However, the obvious issue here is that it's covering up our screen. If you want to disable it, you can go to our image here and just click the check mark. The check mark means that this component here is enabled. If we disable it, it's completely invisible and we will re-enable it through code. So let's click on our bird and you can click F to zoom all the way in. Let's scroll back out a little bit. And now we're going to want to enable our game over text. So we can do this in our bird. Under variables, we're gonna to wanna to create a game object variable. I'll call this game over. I'll under type where it says null, I'll change this to game object. I'm gonna drag our image in this value. Basically, Variables can be more than just a boolean or a string or an integer. You can make variables of pretty much every single component in Unity. One of the most common ones is game object, which means you can make a variable that contains an entire game object. In this case, we've grabbed our image. Now what we're gonna want is we're gonna use that game object variable to reference our image. So we'll go to our bird, I'll drag this out and we're going to want to look for a block called image, which is the component that enables the visibility of our game over text. And we're going to look up enabled. Now there's right here, image set enabled, and I will check that to go true. However, this right here is the image variable and it's referencing self. Self means whatever game object is attached to this code, which means it's the bird. However, the bird does not have any image components, nor does it contain this game object. So we can drag this out, go down the variables object, and we're gonna want get game over. So now if I play our game here, and we run into a pipe, we should see the game over text display over the screen and we can no longer click on the bird. 
So that is it for this tutorial. In this video, we tackled colliding with these pipes, as well as a little bit of a game over screen. In the next coming videos, we will be working on adding sound effects and some more details and a bit more gameplay. I mean, this is pretty much the core of the gameplay, but we still got a bit of a start screen as well as an intro. Because right now, the bird instantly starts moving as soon as you hit play, which is not something we want. So I will be working on that. There is still a bit of an error when you build the game. Pipes are still working a little differently, but that will all be fixed within the coming videos. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you're excited for this series and leave a like as that helps the videos out. So thanks for watching and I will see you later.